Hi, my name is Anna Malero and I welcome you to this edition of the lab course of Pharmaceutical Technology 2. In this video we are going to talk about the GMP and speci specifically about the documents that we will need to fill in in the lab for uh, the work that we will perform. So GMPs are the so-called good manufacturing practice and are um, legal requirements that we have to follow to um, prepare our uh, formulations in the lab. They uh, relate to general minimum conditions regarding not only the manipulation process of the medicines that we will prepare, the compounded uh, formulations, but also um, general terms such as the staff, the local requirements, the equipment that we have to in the lab, the documents we have to fill in, the row and packaging materials, also the SOPs or the elaboration procedures, the quality control essays and the dispensation conditions. So here we have to highlight that the pharmacist is always the responsible person for the compounded medicines prepared in our lab. So um, it's a responsibility to produce them always following the GMP standards. All formulations prepared in our labs must be prepared under the supervision of a pharmacist or by a pharmacist, him or herself. In regarding the locals, uh, the requirements they have to follow refer to uh, the different areas that must be uh, separated in the lab. So once you get to the lab of the pharmaceutical technology course, you will see the different areas that we have. We have a quarantine area where we put all the bulk materials to see if they are um, useful for the formulations that we are going to prepare or not. They do not require the pharmacopoeia conditions. Um, also, we have a separated area for accepted materials, those that are um, adequate for uh, subsequent manipulation to prepare compounded formulations will be stored in a separate area. We also have a separate area for rejected materials, for those that do not follow the, the standards required. Then we have the processing area, which is uh, where we are going to prepare the formulations. And finally, there is a separated area where we uh, dispensate or give the formulations prepared to the patient. Um, <coughs> A special part of the GMPs is the documentation and here we want to uh, make you aware of the, all the documents that have to be prepared and filled in so that our lab follows and uh, meets all the GMP standards. Uh, we have a general documentation, also uh, documentation regarding the raw materials packaging material doc documents, and also the compounded medicines documentations. In this slide, you can see what is the general documentation. Here, we, uh, or this set of documents must contain at least the SOPs, standard operation procedures, about cleaning, not only uh, the formulation, the materials prepared, uh, or the um, equipment that we have, but also uh, how the local has to be uh, cleaned, the bench, and also uh, the technicians preparing the formulation. Not only that, but also we have it to indicate the frequency and the products that we have to use for this cleaning. Furthermore, we should also maintain and calibrate all the equipment and material with their uh, corresponding SOPs as well as their implementation programs, so that we are, uh, can rely that all the equipments are working adequately. We also need to um, highlight the personal uh, hygiene standards and the responsibilities of the personnel involved in the development. So we have to clearly state by a written document what exactly each person has to do in the lab. We also have documents relating to the raw materials and the packaging materials. Here we have to register them once they get into the lab. We have to write all the specification regarding these materials and see if there is a quality control sheet. Otherwise, we will have to perform the quality control in our lab. Um, of course, this quality control has to meet the pharmacopoeia standards. Again, we have uh, a special material or a special documents for the packaging material. 
Here in this slide, we can see the documents that are uh, in the national formulary, Spanish national formulary, to register all raw materials. Here we can see all the information regarding the bulk materials uh, that are going to be used in the lab, uh, regarding uh, register number, name of product, who is the uh, lab, where it comes from, the batch number, quality control is met or not, uh, reception date, number, number of uh, packing materials, and if we decide in the end, after the quarantine period, that this uh, bulk material can be used for further, further processing. Um, here we have also some information regarding this, the pharmacopoeia specification, if it's a uh, uh, pharmacopoeia material or not, where is the monography number, uh, etc. In this slide, we also have the information of the national formulary for the conditioning material. You can see that this table contains similar information than uh, to the bulk materials. We also have a register number, an ID of the product, the lab, the batch number, reception date, and so on. Then, once we have uh, transformed this bulk material into a compounded formulation and also we have packed it, we need to uh, fill in several documents regarding the compounded formulations. These are the SOPs for processing and control if this formulation is not included in the national formulary, because if it's included in the formulary, then the SOP is written and clarified there. If it's not, then we have to fill in a development guide. This is the way uh, this guide is uh, registered. This has to be filled in for all the uh, documents or for all the formulations that are prepared in our lab. Uh, here we have to write the name, composition, the procedure method, uh, the materials used, and a register number or batch number. We have to relate what is the dosage form, the quantity that we have uh, prepared, and the elaboration date. In the table, we have to include all the excipients and APIs used, the batch number of the bulk material, the amount that we weighted, and the unit. Same for the conditioning material. Finally, we have to write down the name of the pharmacist or the technician who prepared the formulation, the control number and expiry date, and finally, if we, are, if we agree that the formulation has been prepared under GMP standards or not, and the signature of the um, pharmacist. Before we give out our formulations to patients, we always have to adequately label the formulation. How uh, is this done? We have also a tip in the national formulary. We have to fill in uh, a label. Here we have um, an example of a complete label. We have to put this in the um, development guide and also on the packaging material. Here we have to write down what's the name of the medicine, uh, the pharmacy, the street, and the telephone number of the pharmacy the name of the prescription uh, doctor and his or her number of uh, collegiate, then the patient na name and also information regarding the information, how much we did and what is the composition, the recitary book number or batch number according to uh, how the formulation is uh, like, then the elaboration date, uh, expiry date, uh, administration route, preservation uh, information, and the amount that is given to the patient. Finally, we always have to write that the children should be um, away from this kind of product because they are dangerous for their health. Um, if the packaging material is too small, then we have an example of a smaller um, label that it's also official and we can use. Here we have less information as you can see, but it's uh, also valid, completely valid for our compounded formulation. Finally, we have to give the patient some more information, not only written, as you can see in this slide, in, through the patient information leaflet, 
But also, orally, we have to explain how to use the compounded formulation, what it is for, and what to do in case of um, side effects. Here in the um, slide, you can see a typical example of uh, a leaf information leaflet for the patient of the national formulary. In this case, it's uh, for the formulation called Pasta Lazar, and you can see that there is information regarding the composition, the activity, pharmaceutical activity, the um, side effects that we have, and other uh, important information such as interactions, warnings, uh, the way it should be applied, and so on. Thank you.